Welcome to our seminar. My name is Erica Leonard and I'm the Director of Quality Control and Senior Research Histologist at Vector Laboratories. And this seminar will be considerations when designing your immunohistochemistry procedure. In the last section, we discussed essential choices in immunohistochemistry, which included your imaging method, detection priorities, and reagent selection. In this section, we're going to select reagents for priorities you have in your laboratory, which can include sensitivity, simplicity, flexibility, rapid results, cost, and reproducibility. The first reagent you'll need to select is your primary antibody. This is the antibody that will detect the antigen of interest in your tissue specimen. You have several resources available in order to choose a primary antibody. You can do literature searches or use antibody search engines, but you'll want to keep in mind some important decisions before making your primary antibody choice. The first thing you need to do is to confirm that the primary antibody is compatible with the protocol that you will be using, that the primary antibody is designed for use in immunohistochemistry and not other applications like Western blotting or ELISA. You'll also want to confirm that your primary antibody is suitable for the fixation you plan to use for your specimen. Additional considerations would be whether or not the species of your primary antibody is compatible with the species of your specimen, and whether or not the primary antibody recognizes the target antigen of your specific sample species. Here's a list of some common antibody search engines you can use on the internet in order to narrow down your choices for primary antibodies. After you've decided on your primary antibody, you'll need to choose your detection reagents. These reagents will be based on imaging method, antibody species, specimen species, and the priorities that you've determined for your laboratory or experiment. So when sensitivity is a priority in your laboratory, you'll want to maximize your signal to noise ratio, and you do this by ensuring that all of the available antigen is effectively converted into visible signal. But the question is, how much sensitivity do you actually need in your assay? Well, this really depends on several things. It depends on the target abundance in your tissue section. Is your target available in low quantities or high quantities in your tissue specimen? Another consideration is your primary antibody. Oftentimes, your primary antibody reagent is very expensive and may be in low quantity. By selecting reagents that will provide a higher sensitivity in your assay, you may be able to dilute out your primary antibody, thus saving money in that respect. Different detection strategies offer you a range of sensitivity options, so you'll need to decide what is best for your application. So let's talk about these detection strategies a little bit further. So detection strategies are kind of like fruit trees. You'll want to think of the size of your tree determines how much fruit that tree can hold, and the fruit is like your signal. So the bigger the tree, the more fruit it can hold, and the easier it is to visualize underneath your microscope. So the first type of detection strategy is a one-step detection strategy. Typically after your primary antibody incubation, you'll have a single detection step. This is a small tree with the lowest amount of fruit, but it also has the least amount of litter underneath the tree. So in this schematic, I'm showing you an example of a one-step chromogenic detection. So after your primary antibody step, you'll add a secondary antibody, which is directed against the species of the primary, and conjugated to that antibody is an enzyme, which will develop a substrate and deposit a precipitate at the site of your target antigen. So in this example, you can see 5D3 demonstrated in this tissue section as the brown staining, which has been detected with a one-step chromogenic detection system. In this example, it's a one-step fluorescent detection system. In a similar manner, following the primary antibody incubation, you add a secondary antibody, which is directly conjugated to a fluorophore, which binds to the species of your primary antibody. In this case, astrocytes are detected using a GFAP primary antibody and a fluorescently labeled one-step detection reagent. The next type of detection strategy are two-step two -step detection strategies. They're a mid-sized tree with slightly more branches allowing more fruit on the tree, which in turn leads to better signal. The first two-step detection is an avid and biotin-based system, a biotin-labeled secondary antibody, which is specifically directed against your primary antibody, is applied, 
it binds your primary antibody, and in turn, the biotin is then detected with a streptavidin or avidin conjugate or a preformed ABC complex. Then you add your substrate, which deposits the precipitate at the site of your target antigen. As you can see in the schematic, the additional layer allows for more enzyme to be deposited at the site of your target, allowing for more signal. In this example, you can see a human prostate stained with the Vectostain Elite ABC demonstrating smooth muscle actin staining. Another type of two-step detection is an antibody-based two-step detection. What we do with this detection strategy is apply our primary antibody, followed by a secondary antibody, which can be labeled or unlabeled. This is then followed with a tertiary antibody directed against your secondary antibody. This allows the tertiary to bind to multiple locations on your secondary antibody, amplifying your signal and depositing more enzyme or fluorophore at the site of your target antigen. In this example, on a frozen tonsil, cytokeratin is being demonstrated using a Vectiflor Excel two-step antibody-based detection system. The third type of detection strategy are amplified detection strategies. This is the largest tree. It has the mo most branches which allow for the most fruit, thereby translating to the highest sensitivity type of situation. In amplified detection systems, you apply your detection reagents sequentially to build branches of your tree, thereby depositing more fluorophore or enzyme at the site of your target antigen. However, you must keep in mind that you want to balance the increased signal with the possibility of increasing background due to the additional reagent additions. I'd like to speak a little bit about polymer-based detection systems. Polymer-based detection systems are non-biotin detection systems, which eliminate the possibility of nonspecific binding due to endogenous biotin in your specimen. The Impress polymer detection system offers the same high sensitivity as our two-step two elite Vectostain ABC. As you can see in this section, KI67 is demonstrated very strongly in this human tonsil using Impress HRP Universal and our Nova Red substrate. Our Impress reagent is a unique micropolymer of either peroxidase or alkaline phosphatase, which has been conjugated to a highly purified secondary antibody. There's no macromolecular backbone, so this minimizes any steric hindrance due to the sheer size of the polymer itself and allows much better access to the target antigen. Not only that, the polymer reagents are ideal for multiple labeling because of their ease of use and their high sensitivity. In this schematic, you'll see Impress Polymer Detection System. We used a similar schematic earlier during our one-step detection strategy, but in this case, our micropolymer reagent is depositing more enzyme at the site of the target antigen, thereby increasing your substrate deposition and increasing your overall sensitivity. Due to the unique micropolymer that the Impress reagent uses, the Impress Polymer System localizes even the most challenging antibodies, such as nuclear antigens, as shown in this picture. P53 is demonstrated very strongly in this breast carcinoma using our Impress polymer system followed with DAB substrate. In addition to our one-step polymer systems, we also offer a two-step polymer option which offers even increased sensitivity over the single step. By adding an amplifier antibody, you're incorporating an additional layer of amplification which leads to an even stronger system signal than our regular one-step polymer-based system. In this schematic, you'll see that after your primary antibody is added, you'll add the amplifier antibody. Follow that with the Impress Excel micropolymer conjugate, and it's able to bind to multiple sites on the amplifier antibody, allowing more enzyme density to be deposited at the site of your target antigen, resulting in increased precipitate of your enzyme substrate. As you can see in this human colon, we've demonstrated CD45 very effectively with the Impress Excel along with DAB substrate. The Impress polymer reagent system yields a stronger signal. KI67 is clearly demonstrated with the Impress polymer system compared to the alternative polymer-based system on the right. Another example is this BCL2 in human tonsil, where the Impress signal on the left shows a significant improvement on, over the competitor's product or the alternative polymer-based system on the right. Another really important decision to make when designing your immunohistochemistry procedure is your choice of chromogen. 
Your chromogen is what's converted by the enzyme in your detection procedure to a color precipitate which is deposited at the site of your target antigen. Vector offers a large palette of colors available for either alkaline phosphatase or peroxidase-based enzyme detection systems. But there are a number of important properties that you're going to want to consider before choosing your substrate. The first one is sensitivity. Not all substrates are the same sensitivity, and not all substrates from various suppliers are the same sensitivity. If you purchase DAB from one supplier, it may not be the same sensitivity as that from another supplier. You'll want to keep this in mind when making your reagent choices. A second very important consideration is the color of your substrate. If you're dealing with pigmented tissue or you've selected a counter stain to use with it, you'll want your substrate color to provide an excellent contrast with that. In addition, if you're doing single or multiple labeling, you'll want to make sure that both chromogens provide good contrast with each other. In this melanoma, you can see the vector red is easily visible compared with the melanin pigment pigments when staining the cyclin A. There are additional considerations to keep in mind when selecting your substrate, such as the heat resistance of that substrate, which is important if you're doing multiplexing with other chromogenic substrates, or doing an in situ protocol. And another consideration is whether or not your substrate is compatible with your mounting media. You should rely on the manufacturer of your substrate to make recommendations for which mounting media to use when choosing a substrate. Not all substrates are compatible with all mounting medias that are currently on the market. And lastly, you should consider that not all chromogens are visible the same way. Some chromogens can be visualized by bright field, dark field, electron, or fluorescence microscopy, and these choices are important when making your substrate decision. In this example, you can see that BCIP NBT is visualized on the same tissue section under both bright field and fluorescence. At Vector Laboratories, we offer a wide array of substrates, colors, and sensitivities, which can be applied in your immunohistochemistry assay. Please refer to this chart in our catalog or on our website to make your decision. Next, we'll discuss about selecting detection reagents when simplicity is your priority. When you want a simplistic assay, you want to minimize the handling and the number of steps that you need to perform into a, to achieve your staining. You'll want to avoid unnecessary steps when possible, such as endogenous enzyme blocks. You can do this by choosing alternative enzyme systems. You can avoid endogenous avidin biotin activity by choosing our non-biotin polymer reagents. And you can minimize protein blocking steps by choosing detection reagents which are highly absorbed and have minimal background. You can also simplify your detection setup by choosing ready-to-use reagents. By doing that, you minimize the calculations and dilutions required to prepare your reagents for your assay setup. It's also good to choose complete staining kits. Vector offers a number of complete staining kits which will give you all the reagents you need to complete your assay. These reagents have been optimized to work together and provide an optimal result when you add your primary antibody. I'll give you a couple of examples of detection protocols to simplify your assay construction. The first one is to use a Vectifloor ready-to-use secondary antibody. After you apply your primary antibody, you have a single step which is ready to use directly from the bottle of a fluorescently labeled secondary antibody for 30 minutes. When that is rinsed off, you apply mounting media and visualize under the fluorescent scope. If you need to do a chromogenic assay, you can apply a similar one-step protocol with our Impress polymer-based system. After your primary antibody steps complete, you add the impressed polymer for 30 minutes, followed by your substrate, and then mount and visualize. So now we'll discuss selecting detection reagents when flexibility is a priority. You want to choose a modular system if the requirements in your laboratory are constantly changing. By doing so, you can easily substitute individual reagents into your protocol without having to change the entire detection system. So let's say that you have a change in your primary antibody species. With the Vectostain ABC kit, you can easily substitute in another secondary antibody when your primary antibody species changes. In this example, you can see that KI67, perhaps prepared in rabbit, is detected on the left and PSA is detected on the right with a biotinylated horse anti-mouse, 
using the same ABC vector stain kit and vector red substrate. A modular system also allows you to change the way you visualize your slides. If you change your detection reagents to accommodate a different visualization method, you don't have to change the other components of the detection system. Substitutions of a different avidin conjugate into the protocol allows for both bright field and fluorescent imaging using the same protocol with simply substituting one reagent. In this example, you can see that PSA is detected on the left and the right using the same biotinylated secondary, in one case using our elite ABC system and in the other case using a dilite 594 stripped avidin. You can also change the chromogen color in order to tailor your single signal for specific applications. In this assay, you're able to easily swap out the color of your chromogen by switching from vector Nova red to vector VIP. Another way to add flexibility into your protocol is to choose universal reagents. Universal reagents allow you to detect multiple antigen species using a single reagent. In this example, KI67 is detected in human tonsil using two different primary antibody species, mouse on the left and rabbit on the right. If you choose adsorbed antibodies, you're able to use those on multiple specimen species without worry of cross-reactivity of your detection reagents to the specimen that you're using. This allows you to use your antibody on multiple species of target specimens. Next, we're gonna discuss selecting detection reagents when rapid results are a priority. In this case, you're gonna to wanna to streamline your protocol as much as possible, eliminating unnecessary steps where you can and eliminating other steps by making decisions in your detection protocol. You can eliminate steps such as pretreatments, blocking, and detection based on the reagents you choose to add into your protocol. You can also choose reagents to minimize your calculations and dilutions that you need to do by choosing RTU reagents that are ready to use straight out of the bottle. You can also design protocols where you can combine steps, such as adding your avenin biotin blocking into serum or adding your protein block into your primary antibody step. Our Vectiflor RTU dilite reagents are excellent, pre-diluted, stabilized and ready to use straight out of the bottle. They minimize any error and minimize the time it takes to dilute and prepare your secondary antibody reagent. You can also streamline your protocol by choosing reagents that have shorter incubation times. Vector offers several kits that have very short incubation times and offer them in a ready to use format as well, such as the Vectostain Universal Quick Kit, which is demonstrating Desmond in this human prostate with DAB. Next, we're going to discuss selecting detection reagents when cost savings is a priority. You need to consider the complete cost of your assay. This is not only the reagent cost, but the labor cost. So the reagent cost is not just the cost per slide. You also have to consider whether or not the reagent you have chosen provides reliable, stable performance over its entire lifetime. You want a reagent that's not only reliable, but reproducible across the entire lifetime of that reagent. Choosing reagents that are multi-purpose are also provide you a cost savings. Concentrates are often a good choice for this because ready to use reagents can often be more expensive. You should also consider the labor costs involved in running your protocol. The hands-on time translate into labor costs, so you'll want to minimize calculations and dilutions where possible. Next, selecting reagents when reproducibility is a priority. These are reagents that you will choose when you run an assay repeatedly to achieve consistent and reliable results every time. You'll want to design and optimize a robust protocol. You do that by optimizing your reagent concentrations and incubation times and you also want to ensure that the reagents you're choosing have a stable performance profile over the entire lifetime of that reagent. It's also very important to validate any new lots that you purchase to achieve optimal results in the current protocol that you're using. In this section, we covered selecting reagents according to your priorities. When sensitivity is important, you want to balance your signal against background by selecting from multiple types of detection strategies. 
you have a choice of visualization method and your choice of chromogens or dyes. When simplicity is important, you want to choose systems that minimize the number or complexity of steps. If flexibility is a priority, you want to design modular systems, use universal reagents or absorbed antibodies to allow you to use common reagents across multiple sample types. If you need rapid results, you want to streamline your protocols with ready-to-use kits. When you're trying to save costs, avoid hidden costs both in reagents and labor. And if reproducibility is important, you want to optimize, verify, and validate all of the reagents in your protocol. In the next section, we're going to cover selecting ancillary reagents that may be required to complete your protocol. Thank you for joining us for our seminar, and I invite you to listen to the additional sessions which are available on our website.